Hey everybody, Dustin over at Geekmatics. So today I've just gotten a MacBook shipped in that is pretty, pretty beat up. So let me show you what we're looking at here. This corner is destroyed. And again, I haven't opened this one up yet. We're gonna take a, it's a data recovery job. We're gonna go ahead and open her up. But if we look here, this corner is destroyed. I'm gonna take this back housing off. And this, you can see the board is physically bent. Again, this is a data recovery job. Normally the first thing I would do is to go ahead and plug in an amp meter, but with this type of damage, you can see the, the battery is unplugged. This was unplugged. Um, we'll go ahead and take this out of the board before we do any testing or put any power to this device. All right, guys, I've literally got my phone taped up to a power supply box so I can get you this angle of me taking the device apart and make sure hopefully the, the whole computer is in the shots let's work on that all right beautiful all right so again the most i went really just to took the bottom off saw how damaged the board was saw this disconnected and started recording so we're going to continue the first kind of visual inspection again i'm not going to normally i would put just plug in a usb amp meter uh, which we'll get into in a minute and kind of determine exactly what's what the computer is drawing and all that good stuff but with yeah. The housing this bent, I'm gonna go ahead and just take it out of the, the housing itself and go from there. So I'll go ahead and start disconnecting things. And again, the client said that it was badly damaged as you saw, and then he took it apart and it would no longer turn on after that. So we're, we're, we're gonna be looking for anything really knocked off the board, okay? Um, any evidence like that. Okay. I'll go ahead and see. All right, well, the power button is disconnected. So I would say maybe that's why he couldn't get it to turn on, but these models, I believe, turn on just by opening them. Auto boot is what it's called. So the board, I don't see a single screw in the board. So the board should just kind of come off. Now we're gonna be lucky with this and we're gonna have lifeboat. So even if we can't get this device working and turning on, we're gonna have lifeboat there to, yep. to see. Come on, nice and easy now. Oh, one more connector. How do we forget about you? I mess up my camera angle. All right, we'll get this out of here. Oh man, that 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 board is is bent. Look at that. How I'm not sure if you guys can see. The damage on this board. Yeah, this one, it looks like somebody got angry at this one. Wow. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and do a, a visual inspection underneath the microscope and see if we can find anything. All right, guys, so what we'll go ahead and do is pull up the schematics. This is a 00928, so I don't think I have that one. I'm not sure if it's been released yet. So we'll use the 8281 as it is very similar. So hopefully these components will still be there, we'll, what we're looking for. All right, so now let's go ahead and go back to this microscope camera real quick now that we got the schematics open. And where that stuff was all damaged was the bent part of the board over here so let's go ahead and try to figure out let's go ahead and start with this damage down here again try to get that clear for you guys okay so it looks like see if I can just take pick that out it uh, doesn't look good what we're gonna do is go ahead and clean that up with some ISO so we can see what we're looking at. Mm -hmm. 
get some compressed air blow off that ISO. So it looks like this stuff here is going to be no stuff. And it, you can see the difference between no stuff here and damage here because pads are actually physically ripped from the board. I mean, that's obviously physical damage up there. But you can see that the, these pads, it looks like we're, are these pads are going to be okay on the board. These, maybe not so much. All right, so we'll go ahead. That's the main difference between no stuff and then damage as you see above. All right, so let's go ahead and go back to board view. And I've got to invest in that Paul Daniels software. I hear that stuff's amazing. All right, so how do I have this flipped over here? Oh no, it's different. That's what I was worried about. Oh wait, no, I got the wrong side of the board. That's why. There we go, over here. So, still looks a little different. It's gonna be towards the end of that chip. Right below this one, okay. So it looks like these were the two no stuffs, this one and this one. So it's gonna be right above the no stuffs, gonna be this resistor and this one. And so these, these are gonna be important. All right, so, so we have PP1V8 awake and S2RACOCL, which anytime I see ACOC or L, I think important. So I'm um, going to go up here to this thing that's physically torn off the board and hall sensor. So a hall effect sensor is going to be the sensor on the board that actually realizes when the lid is open and closed. So uh, earlier you, you heard I mentioned that there was a auto boot when you open up the lid. Uh, so that would explain why that didn't work for that piece to be missing. Also, what would maybe explain the, the no power for him was his power button wasn't working either because it wasn't plugged in. So those two combined, I think, is the reason that this guy's going to have no power. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to check that resistor there and make sure it's okay. And then we'll go ahead and try to power up this board and see if we get anything out of it. All right. So the next thing we're going to go ahead and start looking at is the schematics game. We're going to go back there. And well, first, let's go ahead and go to the board view so we can get the name of that resistor that looks like it's been crap okay so that's going to be r4028 so we'll go over to the schematic and we're just going to look for r wow 4028 was it my memory is that bad double 4028 yeah all right i got it right but no matches that's not good okay why is there no matches 4082 ah look at this this is Dyslexia right there in front of your face. Okay. All right. So there we go. Where is she hiding? Sometimes if I don't, if it doesn't pop out of me, you guys probably see it our right way. I'll zoom in a little bit and search again. So maybe it will be obvious. Not right here. Perfect. So it's a 10K resistor. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the board view. Or microscope camera would be a better name. And we are going to go ahead and check this resistor. And even if it says that it's okay, we're going to go ahead and change it out anyway. Mm -mm -mm. So where, oh, where is my multimeter? Where, oh, where could she be? All right, so at this point, we're gonna go ahead and check that resistor. Now I don't have uh, the camera set up yet, so you're not gonna be able to see my multimeter. It's gonna be a trust-based multimeter, as Jessa says. I believe that's who says that. And sorry, with the, the camera staying out of focus, the board is bent, so anytime I, I lay my hands on it, it kind of goes, goes out of focus. So I'll try to make this fo in focus enough for everybody. So let's go ahead and see if we have what we need to between this resistor and we have ol now even if i didn't have ol i would replace it and i'm going to replace that one too just to make sure we're going to be on the safe side now this is data recovery so it doesn't have to be perfect but i try to do my best in any situation i can so let's go ahead and replace those resistors so how i'm going to do that is i'm going to go back to this schematic i believe we already saw what type of resistor it was it was a 10k resistor so we're going to have to go ahead and find a donor board 
that will have something like that. So, let's see. Alright, perfect. Found my donor. And this is an 00165. So we'll go ahead and pull up that schematic as well. And we are going to look for 10K. I'm sure this schematic will have one somewhere. All right, this one's 10K, but it's five, 1%, so I want to go ahead and, and try to match it up with a 5. So there we go. R7741. It doesn't look like it's a no stuff because it will say no stuff on the schematic. So we'll go ahead and pull up the board, board view for the 00165. And we will look for that schematic, which is R7741. R7741. Okay, we'll try it again. R7741. Okay, and that is going to be on the top side of the board, right next to the connector. So, I'll switch you guys over to the microscope camera. I believe it's going to be this bad boy right here. <clears throat> Just confirm with our board view. Yeah, that's it. That one right there. That is going to be our culprit. So we will go ahead and pull that sucker off the board. Maybe. Sorry, guys. I'm trying to keep this in focus as much as possible. All right. So this is going to be the one that we're looking for. So we'll go ahead and use our tweezers, our hot tweezers for this job. We're going to add a little bit of flux. What the heck is all over my flux? That looks gross. Clean that up. No, that should be enough flux for right now anyway. So we'll go ahead and pick up our tweezers. Let them get hot. Any day now, they will get hot. There we go. And this sucker should just lift right off the board just like that. And again, I like to have two sets of tweezers, one hot, one cold. So that way I can just grab with my cold tweezers once it's off the board. All right, and that donor can go back into the donor pile. And we will go to our destroyed area. Camera work will get better with time, guys, I promise. Day we will both be in focus together. All right, there we go. All right, we're gonna go ahead and take this one off too because I, I don't like the way it looks. something about it. with this board being bent this focus is awful and I, i'm it's either you're in view or i'm not in view and as soon as i put on the put any pressure on the border anything it just immediately goes out of focus 
All right, guys, so we're going to go ahead and fluff the pillows. And then clean off our old flux. Clean, clean, clean. I removed the resistor there so we can come in here with more of a firm hand. We can blow our flux away. No away flux. And we'll be more compressed there because that is just gone. Now we'll go ahead and put some more flux on the board. And kind of make it more liquidy. All right. Now we'll go find the resistor that I'm sure I've lost because I took it off the board. Uh, still on there. Perfect. All right. So. Try to position you on there. There's just literally too much flux on the board at this point with when you see it wiggling around like that. So let's see. Try to position this so I can have it up and down. put some solder on the tip of my iron to make sure both of those sides of the resistor are on there pretty good. All right, there we go. That one's done. We'll make sure we got these padded up. Good for the next one. And again, we replaced both of those just because they looked nasty. We want to make sure that Anything that's questionable, we haven't even tried to put power to the unit yet, unit yet, but we can see things on the board during the uh, visual inspection process that are you can see and like, oh, that's going to need replaced before the unit will turn on. So we're going to go ahead and do those things. Make sure that. All right. So that resistor looks like it's on there pretty good. So that was good, and then we'll go ahead and go back to our schematic and see the next one that we need to look at. <clears throat> All right, so the next one is going to be R20, or I'm sorry, R4071. Okay, so again, back to the schematic. <coughs> R4071. So yeah, we have a zero ohm resistor. So we're gonna go ahead and go back to our donor board schematic and look for 0, 0.00 because that's normally how it's formatted. Maybe not on this schematic because all those are gonna be All right, guys, so the next thing is, is uh, the rest of the visual inspection passed, as you saw, that was kind of the last part of the board that we came up to that had all the damage. So the next thing is going to be to go ahead and plug in a USB amp meter and see what it's pulling and see if maybe this has the potential to turn on. All right, so let's go ahead and get started on that. 
So what I use for that is I use this little SIG USB-C amp meter, okay? Essentially, what, how it works is one side will plug into the MacBook. Um, you know, I plug this one right into the MacBook and then the power for the um, USB-C uh, adapter into that. I'll go ahead and untangle this, maybe. All right. We'll plug this in. So I guess the piece that I need, the USB-C adapter, is still in the housing. So I'm going to go ahead and take that out. And then we'll come back. So I just went ahead and put that in there. So let's go ahead and plug in. And what we'll see is it's backwards. But, all right, 20 volts, good, good. All right, that's what we kind of want to see. So let's go ahead and try to plug this in and see if she turns on. All right, guys, so you'll see I go ahead, went ahead and put the board loosely back in the housing. None of the screws are there, just kind of connected everything I need to really test it. You'll notice I didn't connect the screen because if you look at the housing itself, there's no, I haven't even opened up the laptop, but I, I, I doubt that screen is in any kind of working condition. So we're gonna leave that disconnected because from my experience, if you have internal display connected, uh, it will not go onto the external display, okay? So um, we're gonna just leave that disconnected and we're gonna try to connect it to a external display, see if we get image. But first, let's go ahead and plug in our USB-C amp meter and see if we get anything. So five volts, that's not good. We don't want that. Oh, there we go, 20 volts, that's what we want. And we want to see higher on the amps. Let's wait for a second. Ah, there we go. 1.5 amps. That's really good. And we got a little bit of a fan spin. All right, I think this is going to be a data recovery. Cool. All right, let's go ahead and try external image, see if we have that. The tool I'm going to use because the, the display is broken is just a USB-C to USB-C, HDMI, and USB-A adapter, which is fantastic for these, um, especially when you have a broken screen. So we're going to plug that one in. Um, and HDMI goes in and then we're going to go ahead and power up the computer or give it some power here and uh, Let's see it. Hopefully those fans will start spinning in a second Like they did for me a minute ago Maybe please All right fans spin so let's go ahead and go up to the TV Come on give me an Apple logo All right, guys, so I just got her plugged in. She seems to be pulling the proper amount of juices and everything to power on. So, and we have Apple logo. All right, I'm gonna take that image away because I think it's gonna pop up with his username and password, or his username at least. But while we do that, you can see the damage of this MacBook. And again, that's, that's the board as well that's damaged. So this is a lot of damage that happened to this sucker. And it looks like we'll be able to pull his date off, hopefully. Okay, so guys, so the next thing I want to touch up on is to go over the resistors that we replaced. We didn't really go into them too much when we were looking at them. I'm not 100% what those resistors do. So what I'm going to do now is show you what I do to figure out if I'm not sure of something 100% or what it does on the board, how I figure that out. All right, so let's go ahead and go to the schematic and board view and let's go over that. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and go over to the board view so we can take a look at what we've changed on these two resistors. So it's going to be R4082, and that's going to, on one side of the resistor is going to be PP1V8 awake, and then on the other side, we're going to have S2RACKL. All right, so the L means low. The rest I don't fully understand. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and go to the schematic and pull up the resistor, which we still have here from when we were looking at it a little bit ago. And we see, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take the S2RACKL, the part that I don't 100% understand. We're going to follow it. Maybe we can figure out what this goes to. So we'll hit next after we put it up here in the search. And it doesn't help me too much. It's by the Q4000 to act as a bidirectional. No, it doesn't look like it's going to help me any. All right, so it's going to go to this IC, which is U3900, which when I see this uh, 4 of 7, it means it's going to have 7 pictures with these lines for the single chip, okay? Um, so let's see. If we look at the bottom of the schematic on this page, it might tell us. Ah, yes, camera. So that's going to be something for the camera there. So more than likely, that is going to be nothing to do with why this computer wasn't turning on for our client. Uh, and let's look at the next one, which is going to be PCH SOC Force DFU, 
for CFU. That makes me think of an iPhone, so like a type of recovery mode. Um, don't really know too much on the, of the, on the MacBook. So we'll go ahead and do the same thing with our 4071. It's probably going to be, again, with the camera since they're right next to each other. Yeah, same page as the camera. All right, so this is going to be a fixed camera. That's what we did. Uh, and sure, is get the guy's camera working. Then he's going to send back to Apple Care. So yay us. All right, guys. So just a quick review of what we did today. Uh, client got mad at MacBook. Client threw MacBook on the ground. Then he realized he needed his data and opened up MacBook. Uh, kind of all the bad ideas you can have in one. And then he went and went, decided to go ahead and sent it in. So that was a good idea on his part. So what we did first was because of the damage uh, was so extensive on the housing, we went ahead and took it out of the housing, to make sure nothing was shorting there or anything like that. And uh, did a visual inspection on the board, which we found some corroded resistors, uh, which turned out to have nothing to do with our issue. All right, so um, you know we replaced them anyway. So now camera works. <laughs> uh, and then we went ahead and put the uh, board back in the housing somewhat, kind of just had it sitting there so we can connect battery and all that good stuff and um, started pulling data. So we're getting his data now. So that's good. Also, another thing I wanted to mention is that our bar, getting the new uh, cameras and lighting, I've already purchased them. So Amazon says that all that stuff should be in by the end of the week. So expect to see higher quality videos. Anyway, until next time, I hope you enjoyed and learned something.